This is sure. the 50th anniversary yeah. of the open season, basically, of, of going open. It's amazing. 1968, Arthur Ashe won the first open against Tom Ocker. Nancy Ritchie won the first women's open. Most people don't remember her. People forget that it was a hard-fought battle that the pros used to not be able to play. So open was really meaningful, and it was long fought. We made a film about it called Barnstormers, which Robert Redford narrated. And it's exciting. Here we are 50 years later. So tell us about the tournament this year. As I said, Halep's already out on the women's side. Yeah. Uh, who are the favorites? Who are you looking at? Well, tennis-wise, it's... It's, it's extraordinary. I think the, the, the winner might be the open grounds itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, the new Armstrong Stadium. Virtually every single court except Ash has been completely redone. And of course, Ash Stadium has the roof. So a lot of excitement just on the grounds worth coming out to see. The USTA has done a phenomenal job over the last eight, 10 years in, in taking it to new places. But in it, it's very interesting because you have this amazing crop of great young new players. And yet, you have Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer coming in one and two. You have Novak coming off the bench after two years of being questionable as to whether he's coming back or not. Good friend of ours, and all of a sudden he comes back and wins Wimbledon. On the women's side, you have Serena, maybe the story of the world, yeah. the mother who going has back. got to the finals of Wimbledon, which I don't think anybody expected, and, uh, and a great story of challengers, and yet you have the, the, the tightrope act of someone like Simona Halep going out for the second time in a row in the first round, having won you know, a couple of majors this So year. what does it all mean for the Tennis Channel? Tell us how you guys are doing. It means unmitigated growth, First of all, David. we have to look at this. This is a Ken Solomon racket. <laughs> this is going to take over the Jack Kramer. This is going to be the new Jack Kramer right here. Ken Solomon racket. I've never seen one before. I hope I hope <laughs> not all of your audience remembers who Jack Kramer is, although he did found the, the uh, Pro Tour. Um, you know, for us, it's been an extraordinary period. I've sat here, and you've been great in watching us grow. We're now in over 60 million homes. Ratings have been up dramatically. This year alone, we are already up 50% with our live morning show, which I hope isn't cutting into the ratings here too much. <laughs> um, probably similar great high-end audience. Box. It works I, you know what? Yeah. We love, we'd love to have you as a partner. <laughs> and, uh, and then on the... On the um, on the actual coverage, match coverage, we're up 79% for the first two days versus last year. Part of that may be just there's an overall growth in tennis. Part of it's just a lot of building, and part of it is we did the qualifiers. Well, is there an overall growth, or is it becoming more dispersed? Because we'll put up a bar chart actually showing yeah. what's going on with the ratings. Now, this is for the main, it used to be CBS, now it's ESPN. Yeah. And you had one year up, but overall, if you go back to like 2010 or something, yeah. 2005, sure. there's been a drift down. Well, I think this is in the finals, I would say, the men's finals. Yeah, and I think what you're seeing here is more of a kind of pattern of how network television singular events. Event TV has gone. There are a lot of factors in there. You've got moving from CBS to ESPN. You've got how football impacted it. We don't look at one match as an indicator of anything. Right. There's as much about that as the fact that Kane Shikori played Chilich as right. opposed to, you know, a Roger or Rafa final or a Novak final, whereas we look at the continuum of two weeks of thousands and thousands of hours of and coverage. it's not just on television, obviously. A lot of it's streaming now. You have your streaming service, which I've subscribed to for quite a while. Thank Wonderful you. streaming service. But now we also have the Amazons and the Netflix getting in. Amazon actually has been covering the UK. There's been a little controversy about that. Yeah, they've had a tough time. I mean, overall, tennis is a sport that needed this technology in order to be able to be covered. I mean, for the first time in history, fans and hopefully fans in the making can watch the sport as it exists, which is hundreds of bracketed matches leading to one winner. 128 men, 128 women, one left standing at the end of two weeks. That's extraordinary. Now you can watch them all on whatever app you want. Amazon has gotten into it in the UK. Obviously, all the streaming services are looking sports and, and, uh, and they're been a little powerful. rocky. The Netflix is this world. I mean, you look at in the entertainment area, they're yeah. very powerful. The Netflixes and the Amazons are really moving in. Are they going to push out the ESPNs and the ten tennis channels? You know, I, and it's funny, I would put ESPN almost more in their side than our side, right? Because ESPN is a multi-sport player. And we're an example of how the personalization of media overall is get, is really having an incredible mm. renaissance or probably birth that never existed before because you can go as deep as you want to. Whereas if you're one-stop shopping, these guys are huge. They're driving other initiatives. Amazon is selling products as well as content, and Netflix just has a great first mover advantage, but they're going to have to do it with original content now. Okay.